We've all seen things that we wish we wouldn't have. We've all been like, ah, okay, Lord, I shouldn't have. Yeah, I wish I wouldn't have done that. And uh, Lord, you know, uh, if you do watch a movie that you shouldn't have watched, repent. Lord, I repent of opening up that door. I renounce it out of my life. I don't want any, I don't want any kind of attachment. I don't want any door open. And I pray, you know, we, we pray in Jesus name, kick the devil out of here. This is God's house. And, um, and uh, I want to be of the, you know, uh, of the things of the Lord. If I never make it back home, yes, it was meant to be. I've been sent by the Lord with the destiny. I'm chasing demons out of this land under authority of God's right hand. And I've been down this road a time or two at least. And I'm not giving up for angel, man, nor beast. Cause I'm a devil chasing son of a gun. Ain't giving up till the good Lord comes back to give me. Take me home, I'm part of God's army. Ah, here we come. Come, folks, what do you know? Tom Dunn back with Pastor Sean and Dr. Gregory Reed. Guys, how are you doing tonight? I'm great. I'm great, Tom. Glad to be here with you. And Greg, it's such an honor to be, be in the show with you, too. Looking forward to the conversation tonight. <laughs> Me too. It's good to see you, both of you. Guys, hey, this I just want to make it up to all the listeners and watchers out there. We haven't been on here in a while, but we had to come back and just bring a couple powerhouses with me. So uh, Vicki Joy uh, will be back next Tuesday. We're planning on doing a show. So looking forward to hanging out with her. But hey, we got a lot of stuff to cover. Guys, for decades, Hollywood has been making films about Satanism, about demons, about demon possession, about the occult, making gazillions of dollars off of these movies, okay? Um, and it seems as though, you know, whoever's directing, whoever's writing and producing these films, they know what they're talking about. They know what they're doing. OK, we see a lot of, uh, you know, uh, things that are uh, displayed in these films that are accurate. And it uh, I know, you know, we've been talking about Russ uh, one of the probably about the third time that I went up to see him. He called me and he said, hey, you want to go see a movie with me? And I said, sure. And it was a movie called The Right with Anthony Hopkins. And I went up there and we went and saw I met him right at the theater and we went right in and we watched this movie. And I just, um, you know, of course, any movie has got like these jump scenes and, you know, uh, things like that. And I was just kind of looking out of the corner of my eye, dude. Russ Dizdar is just sitting there watching this movie, not impressed, did not flinch for a second, you know. And then we got out, we went to eat and we talked about the movie, you know. So um, uh, we call that presuppositional analysis. You know, we break down what are the beliefs of the filmmaker, the people? We're not endorsing any of these movies. We're suggesting don't see these movies, okay? Um, I don't watch these movies, but once in a while, okay? Um, so I, I the reason I don't watch them is because I live it, and I, I know what this is about, okay? Sometimes there's information in the movies um, that we – that. Uh, people point, you know, direct us to, and we'll go do it for research. But I honestly don't even like doing it for that. Okay. Because there's nothing really we need for the most part, you know, uh, that any of these films can tell us that we don't already know. Uh, sometimes um, there's some specific details pertaining to, you know, a, sit a situation or a person, and we'll check it out. But um, anyway, uh, 
all kinds of movies. This never stops, but if we've noticed, okay, we're coming up to October. That's when they release all of the scary movies, all the horror movies, okay? So this year is no exception. There's another sequel to The Exorcist called Exorcist Believer, and it's directly tied to the first film because the mother of the of the girl Regan is in this movie. Uh, there's another movie about a nun. Um, there is a, a movie that came out of, uh, about a month ago called Talk to Me. We're going to take a look at that trailer here in a minute and talk about that. Uh, what else? I mean, there's been lots of movies over the past few years. Uh, guys, before we take a look at this first trailer, any comments or thoughts like uh, on on what I'm saying or any of these other movies? Well, I think it's important to realize that one of the things that we're we're concerned about and I'm concerned about as a pastor when I talk to my congregation members and, and people in, in general is we have to be careful how these movies and there's different genres. It's not just the horror films. I mean, it, it can be the comedy films, the romantic films. It can be the children's films. They all have some type of influence in, in, in some type of agenda. Um, and, and if we gloss over that, and if people think, well, it's just going to be harmless, it's just harmless entertainment. Um, I've found a lot of times people that I deal with, uh, they, they can talk to me about some of the things that they've been dreaming about. And we can kind of, I'm not saying it's a direct correlation, but a lot of times the memories that they're having are coming directly from the movies that, that they're, that they've been watching. And so I think we, we have to be careful with that influence. Yeah. I think it's important that we, um, give people enough information to let them know that there are some consequences to uh, uh, for Christians in dis disobedience, just going to watch these movies because they're curious. And, you know, we've had to watch some movies uh, for research that I had to go so guarded in my heart. And there are some movies that were actually showed enough that uh, it was instructional. I thought the believers back in uh, 19, the early 1980s, maybe 82 was very instructional. They had, they had actually done their homework on how Santeria and some of those groups work, uh, but I still wouldn't recommend it. I recommended some people in law enforcement if they wanted to understand it so that they could, but I even told them, I said, you got to guard your heart and your mind. Um, I was early on my first, you know, we in, when we grew up, it was all kinds of movies that you watched and there were scary movies and, you know, uh, movies that made fun of this stuff like The Addams Family. And then came, well, actually two movies that were just, for me, just really scarred me. The first one, believe it or not, was The Night of the Living Dead. I'd gone with a friend, and I still can't get those images out of my mind because it scarred something that didn't need to be scarred. And, of course, now, you know, it's become an absolute industry, and people are totally numb to it. But The Exorcist was one that I I, I should have never gone to see Um and I saw it twice with friends, and the second time around, as a Christian, I got hammered spiritually. I mean, there were demonic manifestations when I got home, and I got in my apartment that night with a, a friend from school that I was rooming with. We were both believers. We knew we shouldn't have gone, but we got absolutely hammered demonically, and that's when I realized this is not just entertainment. This is open doors to things. Absolutely. Greg, yeah. And with that being said, um, I want to mention again, we're going to watch some excerpts, some trailers of these films. And um, if this is not for you, if it, you know, if it's going to cause a problem for you, then uh, you may not want to watch it. OK, uh, we're not endorsing these films. Greg, I'm glad you said that um, this can open up doors. OK, I've seen it happen where um, I've seen it happen in my own family. OK, um, I'm not going to go into the story now, but my daughter, when she was younger, uh, her brother was watching a scary movie that he shouldn't have been watching at the grandparents house. And she uh, was walking by the doorway and stuck her head in and saw it. And it really caused some problems for a few months. And I was actually just talking to my daughter about that a few um, uh, last weekend. 
And she told me even more detail about what that movie did to her and the fear that it caused. And then let me know if you guys have heard of this or what you think about this. If say you're say you're an adult and you're watching a movie by yourself late at night and nobody else knows. I believe that you can open up doors in your house and the kids that aren't even watching the movies can have nightmares. What do you think about that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think I can, I can give you all kinds of examples. I know uh, my daughter recently came back home and uh, she was staying a few nights with us and, and we, we both were talking about some things and, and I was doing some research and she wanted me to do some more things. And she says, Hey, have you seen this movie? And so we, we started watching this movie and I stopped the movie at that point And I said, let's pray because I could tell that there was, you know, some people are going to look at us and say, well, that's just who that's just hoopla. Or it, just, it doesn't work that way. Folks, it does work that way. Their spirits always around us. They're they're watching, and they're waiting for opportunities to those open doors. As Greg said, they're waiting for that opportunity. And if we give them that opportunity by what we're watching and what we're listening to, they're going to take advantage of that. And we may not even realize it for four or five days later. We may. I don't believe some people ever realized because they watched the movie and. Because when I turned that off, we were hearing things. There were some paranormal. You know, I'm the paranormal pastor a lot of times. There's things happening in the spiritual realm. And when I turned that off, we were hearing things. And at the same time, as I began to pray, and I just asked God to take it away, as Russ, Russ said, and as we talk about clearing the air, things calmed down. And, and when I got when we got done praying, my daughter looked at me and said exactly what I thought. She said, that's exactly what I thought. And so she started talking to me about things that was going on and we started praying even more. So folks, it's not something that you can play with. Um, you, you know, I'm going to let Greg talk here in a second, but I think it's just important to realize there's, there's a scripture that I'm going to, I'm going to read a scripture real quick. If you don't mind, you know, first, uh, Timothy chapter four, verse one says, now the speak, the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, given heed to seducing spirits. Folks, these things are seducing us to watch, to, to think about they're planning these things and memories and, and planning these thoughts in our mind by what we're watching and viewing. And it matters and it matters a lot. You know, uh, for me personally, I used to love horror movies. Okay, uh, I would go over to my um, cousin's house, my aunt, and my aunt's house, on the weekend, every weekend, and we would rent as many movies as we can because she lived right next door to a video uh, store. We would rent as many movies as we can and watch them all that weekend: mm -hmm. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I used to love these movies. Um, and when I started working with Russ, they became boring to me. And I, I don't, they're not as interesting to me anymore. You know, there was um, a, a thrill involved in it. Like I wanted to see something that would just uh, freak me out. Okay. I never considered the supernatural implications. Okay. Okay. But I was a man in my, you know, early 30s, uh, afraid of the dark. OK, not for, you know, um, uh, you know, for nothing. Right. So anyway, Greg. I just had kind of a side thought, big rabbit trail, but I'm going to throw it in there anyway. Because I know I've talked to people for years and they're all friends and I love them, but they're like, well, you're going a little too extreme. You know, you think you've got an object in your house. It's going to, you know, it's got a demon attached to it and stuff. But, you know, the, the, those of us who've worked in spiritual warfare, one thing I actually heard Pat Robertson say one time is a man with an experience has a lot more to say than a man with an opinion. And, and we have walked through these things and we witnessed and experienced how they work. And one of my, among a thousand other concerns, one of the things that just crossed my mind, and we can talk about or just move on, that's fine. 
but I thought about AI and what is AI except it's a machine, so to speak. It's, a, it's something that it's just, it's not real. You know what I mean? It's an object, even though it's electronic, it's, a, it's an object. Mm. Um, just like a Ouija board is nothing more than press board and some lettering. And when I saw the AI app that is, you can, from Apple, that you can talk to God or the devil, I thought AI is going to end up being uh, one of the biggest Ouija boards entrances to the dark side that we've ever, will ever witness in our lifetime. And that really just gives me chills. Greg, I mean, it's interesting that, um, that you're saying that. I mean, we've definitely talked about that on this show before, but just that just shows like natural discernment. You know what I'm saying? It's like anybody and there's, there are people that are listening to this right now that can relate with that. Like, you know, we get a check, like when we see this and we're like, okay, this is not good. This is not good. And we're all on the same page without even knowing we're on the same page. We didn't have a talk about this. So, um, so guys, um, we're going to take a look at this trailer and uh, we can get an idea about this film from the trailer. And there's a, there's a ton of red flags in this. Uh, and I would almost say that it's almost as if this, um, this movie is designed to um, entice people to reach out. Okay. So let's take a look and we're going to watch, let's watch, uh, uh, about, uh, 45 seconds of this or, um, uh, maybe I'll tell you when to cut it off here. We'll, we'll see how far we get because I don't know if we're going to get a copyright strike or anything like that. So let's go ahead and try and watch some of this, but you're going to be able to see in the titles. Okay. Um, about, you know, about this film here, this is called talk to me. This came out a couple of months ago, I think. So uh, pause it right there and then we'll come back to it. So um, the, the premise of this film is there is some kind of a statue hand that you reach out and you hold and you say, talk to me, okay? So this is, you know, obviously uh, a direct engagement, okay, of the dark side, uh, just like a Ouija board, um, uh, just like um, you, you don't even need a Ouija board. You could, uh, people... Um, this has been about five years ago, they were making homemade Ouija boards where they would put a pencil on a piece of paper and, and draw like, um, uh, you know, uh, a tic-tac-toe board or something or, or a plus sign. And um, they would uh, ask it a question and then the pencil would spin around and point to yes or no or whatever. I mean, that that was the idea behind it, you know. And these kids were doing this in, in school. My daughter came home and told me about this. So, um, the, the enemy, okay, is, um, uh, he'll use anything. He doesn't care. Uh, this is a unique take on this idea of, uh, of a Ouija board where it's got this like, um, stat, you know, this, uh, statue hand that you reach out and, and, and talk to. And, uh, they said, don't do it for more than 90 seconds because whatever you're talking to is going to want to stay. Okay, apparently that's the rules of engagement. Had, have any of you guys heard of this movie before? I'm just wondering. Nope, it's brand new to me. Yeah, I heard a little bit about it. I was uh, actually going to uh, think about watching some of the trailers. I hadn't even watched the trailers, but I have had, had people talk to me about it. Uh, I've just noticed just right off the bat, one of the things that you said, and, and one of the things that I kind of noticed even in the trailer as you said, is talk about they want you to reach out, but they say don't do it more than 90 seconds, they'll stay. Folks, I'm just going to, I want to tell you right off the bat, right here, you do it one second, they'll stay. Amen. Yeah, that's right. So that that's the kicker. <laughs> yeah. Here. There, there's no, there's no 90 second safe zone. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that would be, yeah, one of the major lies of the film. And, uh, you know, guys, um, when we were kids, they one of the challenges uh, that we would hear around school was to to do Bloody Mary, go in the bathroom, shut the door in complete darkness, and say that you know in in the mirror, right? Still a thing, by the way. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. 
So the the enemy is looking for any door he can. Let's watch some more of this trailer. So interesting. Um, uh, you know, there's uh, some lines in there that are interesting. Uh, one of the taglines of the film grabs you by the hand and drags you straight to hell. Okay, that's nice. But um, they, you just heard somebody say, what if you opened a door and you didn't shut it? So maybe we can just take a pause right here and explain um, how to shut the door and how not to open the door. Uh, Greg? Well, how not to open it is don't watch movies like this, for one thing. The other thing is you don't, you don't do things like, I mean, this is the world I grew up in. This is, this is chilling to me because of the, the things that I did, uh, those things are real. Uh, contacting things with Ouija board is real. Um, you know, ha I mean, I grew up with things visiting me in the night. I had no choice about it, but that was the world that I lived in. And I realized that a lot of doors were open for me, and then I opened more. And learning how to shut them was a whole different thing. Uh, before you, I punched Pastor Sean on this because the pastor, he's, I'm sure, got a lot to say about shutting in the door, but. One of the things that concerns me, I'm sure you've heard of a, a thing called Loot Crate, which is a little thing that they send to kids. And a couple of years ago, I was, um, I can't go into a lot of details. Let me just say that a, a young person I know was given one of these, had one of these, opened it up, and what it had was a card on it with a Ouija board pin. And it said, we have cursed you. Now tell me that they're not after our kids. Pastor Sean. Oh, amen. I, I, they're definitely after the kids. And I want to be clear about something. The movie's going to not, the movie's going to be teaching you how to open the doors. It's through the intention. It's through the calling out. Um, you know, the Bible is explicit in Deuteronomy 18 and Leviticus there that, that we're not to call out and talk to the, the dead, to talk to the spirits, to do the divination. So, Evan, you know, but it's telling you to call out. Now, their idea of closing the door is doing some type of ritual. Folks, That that's not going to cut it. Th that ritual is just going to continue to bring more darkness and more spirits into your life. The only true way that you're going to shut those doors is, number one, repent and stop doing what they're telling you to do. This girl needs to stop and, you know, in the movie... If I was to counsel that girl, I would be saying, number one, confess your sin before the Lord. You've talked to the dead. You, you've experienced that. Now confess your sins to the Lord. Repent. Turn away from it. Stop it. Renounce it and tell it to leave. And, and by the way, now this woman's going to have a battle for a long, almost probably all her life to a certain degree because of this. And so, folks, the only way to close that door is through confession and a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the only way that it truly closes. Tom? So what this movie, okay, is um, is portraying is something that's very real, that's happening all over the country, all around the world, where people are engaging the supernatural, engaging the demonic. They think, now, in this film, okay, um, this girl wants to, uh, engage her mom. She wants to talk to her mom. It opens up talking about my mom's remembrance day. Okay. And right. her mom is gone. So she wants to reach out. Um, God's word give us, gives us all the information we need to know about the afterlife. And, uh, uh, it, you know, we're warned, uh, not to engage the dead. Okay. Um, it doesn't give really a reason why, um, except for God knows that these demonic um, uh, forces can run circles around us. We are outmatched. There's no way that we can do a seance or we can do a Ouija board and think that we're going to outsmart a demon. They're outsmarting us, okay? They're outsmarting anybody that engages in that in any way. So they're, 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 they're going to run circles around you. Um, how, how many stories, and there's no shortage of this, okay? You can look this up, uh, of people that have been tormented 
by doing this sort of thing, okay? And how many people have come to us, uh, Greg and Sean, because years ago they opened a door through a Ouija board, through something, uh, by being involved, you know, in something like this. Uh, the movie is putting it out there as entertainment, okay? Um, we're using this trailer as a warning, telling people, hey, this is what it really is, okay? And uh, stay away from it. Go ahead, Greg. Well, without getting everybody into too much trouble, let me tell you, the concern for me has now, uh, you know me, so I don't know how, where this is going to go, but... Um, one of the things that just really bothers me is one of the more, more popular Christian books over the last couple of years, written by some very sincere people in ministry, pastor and his wife, whose son was killed in a car wreck. And, and next thing you know, they're having visitations from their son in the church. And they wrote a book about it. And now the guy's on the board of one of the largest Christian organizations in the country. It's the same thing. He's just opened the door. I, you know, are these people sincere? Yes. Are they? Were, is he a man of God? I think he is. But he turns it off when people try to say, that was not your son. You can't talk to the dead. God forbids it. And my concern is that's opened up the whole wave of necromancy into believers that have read that book and believe it's from God. Amen. Amen. I mean, when I sit down and talk with people and I have people as a pastor, you're dealing with people from the moment of their loved one's death and, and you're caring for them most of the person's life if you're there long enough. And I talk to people all the time. And it's 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 amazing to me how many people don't understand that they can't tell for sure if this is their dead loved one. Like Tom said a while ago, these things, the demonic is going to run circles around us. And I believe one of the things, the reasons why the Bible tells us not to talk with the dead. So therefore, it's probable that we could probably talk to the dead. But how do we know for sure? And I think that's one of the reasons why, because, again, we're going to come back to something that we talked about with these movies. That's the influence. They're going to influence us. They're going to say things. I, I, I give an account of a woman that I dealt with, um, and I've talked about this on a couple of shows. Uh, for years, she thought she was talking to her, her husband and had passed away. And for years, I was telling her, no, that's not it. It's, you know, you know, and yet I was trying to, to walk softly with her to, to understand that I'm ministering to her. Finally, one day she calls me and says, hey, you know, this this spirit is getting angry at me because I'm not doing the checkbook. I'm not doing the things that they want me to do. And I said, well, what are the things they're wanting you to do? And she started telling me and it was a lot of sexual perversion. And I was like, listen, do you not understand this is not your husband? And so that aspect of talk in the film that we just looked at the trailer that allure of talking to the the dead relative is powerful and that they're going to play on that so i want to i want to shift gears for a minute and i i want to get your guys's opinion on this because i was shown of some video footage the other day definite orb definite something's going on lights were flashing it was not it was not nor it was not a normal thing okay so and this person is videotaping it. I think that now that this um, entity has their attention, it's just going to ramp up the engagement. What are your thoughts on that? Pastor Sean? Uh, oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it is something that I see on an ongoing basis is that, um, I mean, I've had, I don't know how many people I've had to deal with that, they got to watch the ghost hunters and they see something going on in their house. And so they start running with their phone or with a recorder trying to talk to the spirit and trying to video the spirit. And then they get engaged with it. I actually had one guy who, who uh, another, he was another pastor called me and said, Hey, I, I, I hear you talk about these things. Will you talk to this guy and get him to stop doing what he's doing? 
And I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll try my best. And what he was doing was just going around with a phone, recording in his own house things that were happening. Folks, they're they're doing that. They're manifesting. I, I mean, I think Greg may agree, and, and you may agree, Tom. A lot of time, the manifestations are nothing more than to drag you deeper into the research, to drag you deeper into what's happening. We don't really need to know what's happening. We know what's happening already. Greg, what, what do you think? Uh, I agree. And I think, Tom, at the, at the uh, Go Therefore conference, you knocked it out of the ballpark when you talked about not ODing on the red pill. Because, I mean, that was a warning to all of us, including myself, that we have to get perspective and, and not be to a point where we're being dragged into things that God's not given us permission to even look into. Uh, but again, to kind of toss this back to things I'm concerned about with the church, I have had several situations where there have been churches where orbs have appeared and they're, they're videotaping this and saying that they're angels. And, and it, again, it goes back to the same thing. There's no little discernment and no teaching on these things. And, and the back door of the church is wide open for occult stuff like that to creep in. Yeah. I believe, and, and let me give you guys a scenario and, and ask you what you think about this, because um, I think the dark side's only looking for an invitation. There could be some actual faulty wiring that would cause, you know what I'm saying? Um, that would cause somebody to think that, hey, there's a ghost in here, right? And then they begin to engage nothing. but um, uh, because demons are looking for invitations, they will perform for somebody that's looking for something. Hey, there's a good question here from the friendly outcast, Pastor Sean. It says, if, if one was, was not there, how do we truly know? So in other words, how do you know if it's, uh, if it's electricity or a demon? Okay. Uh, how can you tell, how do you test the spirits? Well, first of all, I mean, I kind of go back to what Greg said a while ago. It, 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 why are we even worried about testing the spirits in the first place in a way? I mean, if, if it's, you know, it's kind of like what L.A. Marzulli and some others say, you know, get rid of it. Don't don't even engage it, you know, but but coming back to the question in, in, the, in the sense of how do we know? Well, we don't know. And that's the problem. I'll give you an example. Um, I worked on a security team for a long period of time. And one of my jobs was is to find out who's going in this particular location. And we had set up certain certain technology at that time that we had. And we kept hearing noises. And even people inside of our, our team were like, uh, you know, could this be a spirit? Could this, you know, what was going on? Long story short, we found out it was the air compressor of the um, uh, freezer that was sitting out on the front porch of the house. And we were hearing it inside the house. And so there's things that can be debunked. But here's the thing. You know, if you're chasing a spirit, you're eventually going to find it. It's kind of like, you know, someone once said, you know, what happens when a dog finally catches the tire? Yeah. I remember it was over 10 years ago. There was this phenomenon happening all around the world, guys. And I don't know if you remember this, where these strange noises were being heard and people thought that these were horns or something. But coincidentally, they're all happening near railroad yards. OK. Yeah. And um, I don't I think as somebody I know debunked this. OK. They were able, you know, um, to uh, to track down, I don't know about ten of these locations, and people kept putting these up. You know, you hear one, and it's a just imagine the sound of a of a train just like breaking or screeching on the tracks or something, and you know, it makes a a dark hum, you know, out there. And people were convinced that this was like uh, uh, Gabriel blowing the horn and God's coming back or something like that. I, I don't even know, but that's another example of OD and on red pills of people trying to 
minimize, oh, that, that's just a scary movie. That really don't happen. And then yet when things really start happening in a person's life, yeah. this going to turn it to fear because now they're going to, what's happening, you know, what's happening here. And, and I just try to tell people, look, the sensational stuff, again, is there to allure you, to bring fear, to, to do all this thing. But stop it. Don't you have the power in Christ Jesus to stop it? You have the power in the name of Jesus. But let me tell you something. You need to have a relationship with him. Or just saying in name of Jesus is not going to stop this stuff. You have to have Christ in your life because the, the demonic realm knows whose side you're really on and what's going on in your heart. So I was a man in my early 30s afraid of the dark. OK, because of some things that happened to me when I was a little kid and I didn't know how to beat it. All right. All I knew was the blood of Christ. OK, I plead the blood of Christ. Well, it was um, it, it was a defense. It wasn't an offense. You know, it was I, I said that out of fear, not out of power. OK, yeah. so uh, once I took once I learned uh, the authority. OK, and the full armor and all those things, I, I have not had any fear in dealing with these things. And I used to have very scary dreams. Um, but now when I have a dream about a demon, it's, uh, it's me going after the demon in Jesus name. Okay. So, and I, I don't say that I'm not, I don't say that out of arrogance or anything. I believe God gives me dreams to, sh to teach me or show me, you know, the authority that I have in him, you know, one of my concerns about all of it is that knowing what the agenda of the demonic world is, they want more than anything else, first of all, to get the open door to influence and hopefully inhabit somebody but they want to conceal themselves as quickly as that's been accomplished and so i wonder how many people have already had those doors opened they're already having things uh you know in them around them but these things are not going to come right out and so that's and i think as believers we're aware more and more if you if you walk and i gotta tell you i'm so thankful for deliverance ministries that can do this. I seem to get called in on the worst case scenarios, you know, so I'm not a real fan of doing this stuff because as you guys know, when you hit the, some of the more heavy cases, it's, it's nasty, ugly, and it's draining. And you know, Jesus is in charge, but sometimes it's that you got to drive and drive till they're driven out. Uh, having said that, there was a revelatory moment for me when I was with the youth conference and we had a kid um, manifest about a 17 year old right in the middle of the conference during prayer time and all the i i was another part of the conference i was another part of the the place and they came and got me said you got to deal with this and i came in and engaged the situation and just this thing was screaming and yelling and i just got right down in the young person's ear and i said you need to come out in the name of jesus christ right now and this thing stopped and said why aren't you afraid of me I said, because it's you that needs to be afraid of Jesus Christ that's in me. And the thing just screamed and left. But we have to have the authority that we carry because out there the world has, we're, we're seeing the world filled up with people who have been demonized. You know, we kind of joke about it and call them pod people because you can walk down the streets and all of a sudden, bam, their eyes are right on you and you know there's something there. And uh, we have to just know that that concealment of the demonic world is in place. And so um, it takes a lot of discernment from God to, well, it doesn't. We just need to walk in the spirit. And I think those things will, God's going to give us everything we need. But I just, it just goes back to me and the fact that we, starting with Emily Rose and a bunch of stuff after that, people have opened doors and opened doors. I mean, I was so shocked when I watched the first video of the cartoon Billy and Mandy that came out uh, because uh, somebody that I love very dearly, it's, you know, a, a relative child was watching it and they were not old enough to know the difference, but I, they, I was babysitting them and they had shut the door to their room and they never did that. They're very, very little, I'm four or five years old. And then I opened the door and they're watching Billy and Mandy. And there was like a hypnosis thing was going on. I'm like, what in the world? And I went back and watched the cartoon, the first one, and it looked very simple. It's a, you know, a very cynical goth girl and her stupid brother in the Grim Reaper. But in the credits on the first 
move the first cartoon right down below the credits it said do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law so we cannot underestimate the people that are deliberately inserting all of this darkness into the movies and into the music and into the cartoons it's just there yeah yeah no kidding no kidding so much to talk about all this such a good conversation guys um uh i just want to mention this right now folks uh people try to call us out and fly us out i was just telling a story the other day um people hear about this channel and they're like okay let's call tom and jared or pastor sean or or greg reed or whatever hey no you do it you do it okay just in the if you're are you a christian if you're a Christian, that means you have the authority, okay? And then get some prayer warriors in there and, and and kick this thing out in Jesus' name. I did my first one when I was like 17 years old over the phone, okay? And um, so we, we need more people that are willing to do this. Take Freedom Encounters by Russ Dizdar. It's free on throughtheblack.com, okay? Take fear off of the table, all right? Forget everything that you see in the movie trailers, okay? Forget everything you know about The Exorcist, okay? And learn what God's word says about this, okay? Paul was walking along, and this girl was behind him, and he turned around, and he said, get out of her in Jesus' name, and she got out, okay? She had a python spirit, and we can see, you know, we can see the examples, okay? The ministry of Jesus. Uh, every time a demon uh, showed up, it fell down in fear of Jesus, okay? And that's the truth. That's the truth that they're trying to hide, okay? Think about that. They are in fear of the authority of Christ, the power of Christ, the blood of Christ, okay? And they throw themselves down at his feet. And if you are a Christian, you have the spirit of God inside of you. That means you have the authority of Christ. Okay, the 72 couldn't believe it. They came back um, and they were like, man, even the demons submit to us in your name. He said, don't rejoice because you have authority over this, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Okay, so this is not a superpower. All right. It's, it's just something that needs to be done. If somebody needs a, a hamburger, buy them a hamburger. If somebody needs a demon out, get the demon out, okay? On you, this wars against the Spirit of God in front of you. Think about the people that are completely oblivious, clueless, mm. that are watching this by the millions, these movies, and what effect it's having on them. Um the damage that's, that's doing, the doors that are opening, okay? So, folks, I've read books. I've seen crime scene photos. I've seen things I can't unsee, okay? Um, I hear um, I hear the testimonies, and I listen to the person, and I look at them without flinching, okay? Um, and let them know that God's heart is broken because of what's happened to them. We've, I mean, we've heard these horrific things, right? So um, again, we're not endorsing these movies. We're not saying it's okay to watch these movies. Um, and, and really, compared to the real thing, these movies are, you know, um, I, I don't want to say they're a joke because I, I want you to take this seriously, okay? But uh, m my reason for losing interest in them is real life is more exciting than a movie, okay? So um, anyway, uh, final thoughts, uh, Pastor Sean. Uh, my, my thoughts tonight is that kind of the second what you just said really about if you've watched something, you may think, well, that's just silly. It's not going to bother me. Still ask the Lord for forgiveness of your, you know, for the things that you've seen in that movie, the things that you thought about. We hadn't got into this. I don't want to go down this rabbit trail. But fantasy is a huge part of watching movies for a lot of people. They will fantasize that they're in that movie. They'll fantasize that they're the main character. And that is what they, a lot of times, will open more and more doors. And so, you know, confess to the Lord 
the things that you've watched, the things that you fantasized about, really deal with the Lord because those that cleansing of your heart is what really protects you and closes those doors. No ritual is going to do that. It's just confession and relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. We have to walk in the authority of Jesus. Jesus in us, through us, and the way that we live and the way that we talk needs to be so attractive to people that they are either going to discard it completely or they're going to be drawn to it. We have to, we have to walk in the kind of vibrant spiritual life that makes all of Satan's toys look like he's just a deadbeat amateur. And how we do that is just to walk in the spirit and to ask for God's authority, God's protection, and God's compassion because the world's going down in flames. And late through the black.com, you can find the uh, Russ's teaching. We think Russ is the best of the best, and uh, he just had a gift for this. Uh, man, the work that he put into these courses. Yeah, you go to throughtheblack.com, click here, and there, there you go. Uh, if you scroll down there, you can see how you can get the courses, okay? So um, right there, click on it, uh, Russ's course, Confronting the Powers. I always recommend take that one first. That course, God used that course to change my life. OK, and God was already moving in, in my life before, you know, um, if, if you missed it and you weren't here at the beginning, I shared an email that I sent Russ. And just by listening to his radio show, I began to, you know, um, apply changes to my life. Proverbs chapter four, above all else, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. I love that. I stand on that. And um, uh, what amazing wisdom we get from Proverbs talking about guarding our heart, okay, and, and just not allowing this garbage in there. Um, the best thing we can do for research and preparing, you know, is reading God's word, okay? Um, and you know what? It goes prayer. God's word, worship, all those things go hand in hand. And then, then you can take a course like Russ Dizdar. Then you can read a book like uh, War of Ages, okay, by uh, Greg Reed. So, uh, Greg, you've got uh, a, a ton of books, spiritual warfare, all of these things. Where can people find them at? Um, you can find them at the uh, website is uh, gregoryreed.com, R-E-I-D. And uh, most of my books, except for two, I think, are on Amazon. Just Gregory R. Reed. Yes. And search and for the books there. Youth Fire Ministries. And uh, there you go. There's all the books. Uh, of course, Nobody's Angel is his, um, his testimony, The War of Ages. People, somebody tonight said, hey, I'm halfway through The War of Ages, and they love it. Okay. So uh, uh, the Trojan Church and so on, uh, it's all, um, it's out there. Uh, so, guys, yeah, check it out. And also, I want to mention Greg's uh, CD, Stranger in This Place. Amazing CD. I love what somebody said about this last week, that it's a peaceful CD. And I agree. That's a good That's a good way to describe that. Uh, Pastor Sean? Well, I wanted to say this real quick uh, to kind of give Greg a little bit of encouragement. Um, the book that The War of Ages here. Um, you may not have known this, and we I haven't shared this with you, I don't think. I took this book through about with about 17 pastors here about in the last year. Uh, and I just wanted to share that with you, that this is what I use. I use your your material to to teach those pastors. And and it I, I you know I got them all the book. And I just wanted you to know that seven at least 17 other pastors besides me are are looking to the material. And, and that you are in encouragement. And I just want to thank you for that, for, for all that you have done. Thank you. Glory to God. Guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I want to say thank you to all the listeners out there uh, that are live in the archives. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thanks for commenting and uh, just letting us know what you think about what we had to say tonight. Okay. Thanks for sharing this video. That helps us get the word out. Guys, we covet your prayers. 
And uh, hey, get in the game. Get in the game. What is God calling you to? Um, uh, we, I, I like what you said. We're in a search and rescue, and uh, we need as many people as we can uh, out there on the field with us. God bless everybody. We'll we'll be back next week with Vicky Joy. Hey folks, I just met the witches and Satanists, and they're going to allow me to do an interview with them. So let's see what happens.